I know that tabletop RPG players tend to fall into two different camps, the IRL players who will only play at a physical table and the VTT players who largely or exclusively play online through a virtual tabletop. It's more of a Venn diagram with these two camps, of course, and I'm not going to go through the pros and cons of these methods of playing. If you've experienced them both, then you already know. What I wanted to show you in this video is a particular resource that you can use if you're playing online, and specifically if you're playing an RPG that requires or is enhanced by a top-down map. That resource is the Chepiku Patreon. Chepiku is the shortened and combined name of two artists who have been creating so-called battle maps for a number of years now, and up until now just made maps for fantasy settings. But they just launched a second Patreon for sci-fi maps, bringing all the special bells and whistles to these maps that made their fantasy maps so popular and well-known. Animated versions, multiple color versions, virtual tabletop integration, and all in high resolution so when you zoom in while playing, you get minimal pixelation. I wanted to focus specifically on the sci-fi maps that they're putting out right now on their newer Patreon, but I think it's worth mentioning that their original Patreon is huge. At the time of this recording, this Patreon has almost 20,000 members and they're averaging $56,900 per map pack release. And the reason for these huge numbers is the fact that these maps are so good. Let's take a look at some of their newer sci-fi maps and the features that come with them. I think the best way to do this is just to sign up for their $10 per map pack support level and then just do a sort of first person walkthrough of what you get. I think what's crazy is that you're going to see here just how much you get for throwing 10 bucks at this Patreon. Okay, so the first thing that happens when you sign up is you get this email, which happens to act as the roadmap for this video. First thing is all patrons get the full map list. At the time of this recording, this list comes out to 14 planetary maps, three mechs, 37 spaceships, three space stations, three asset packs, and then a whole list of collaborations that JPiku has done with other creators that come in the form of more maps, battle tokens, adventures, items, and a lot of music. It's all kind of overwhelming, so what I'll do is just show you one or two examples from each of the main native categories. So under planetary maps, let's take a look at the reactor core. I love a reactor core scene because it just has a built-in timer ticking away to something catastrophic. At the $1 level, you actually get four versions of this map, which if you're not used to different versions, you'll get hooked pretty fast as a GM. Being able to instantly flip to a different version of a map to show a scene change is pretty impressive to players, and it also helps a lot with immersion. At the $5 level for this map, there are 10 more versions. Massacre, if you want to start the scene with horror. No Bridges, in case you want to use the liquid channel here as an obstacle. Ocean and Rose are color variations on the open fluid pools. Electrolytes and Sewage are a couple more for a different look and feel. It's interesting that just by changing the color of the fluid, you can completely change the atmosphere you're presenting. Toxic and Hot Tub are pretty dramatic variants that present a very hostile reactor core room. And finally, Danger and Get Out, which are perfect for an end of scene, clock has run out type of moment. But since we pledged at the $10 level here, we also get this, an animated loop variant that actually feels like a living, breathing environment. I've played in a few games where the GM uses an animated map like this, and it really is very immersive, especially if the GM can find some ambient sound to accompany the map. There are just a handful of mechs created so far, but let's take a look at the Macro Kyra. This is a huge crab-shaped repair vehicle. At the $1 level, you get an exterior and an interior version, along with detachable legs, which can really help with showing vehicle damage and distress. At the $5 level, there are just a slew of conditions and color options that you can choose from. This particular mech actually also comes with a bonus map by Stained Carbon Maps. The idea is that your players could be inside this crab vehicle, exploring this crashed alien meteor site if you want. Okay, so as far as space stations, we only have three maps at the time of this recording, but check out these maps. Each map represents a cross-section of a massive station they call the Ouroboros, but which you can call whatever you want. So the three map packs released each cover one massive floor, and you can see this external illustration here of the overall station structure. Even at the $1 level, you're getting enough of a battle map to last a full session of gaming, or even a home base that serves an entire campaign. But with the variants here, you can express this station in different ways using different palettes to your liking. By the way, these maps also come with a bonus collaboration with Michael Gelfie Studios, which has produced a lot of RPG ambience tracks. The soundscape that comes with the station includes a full song and five ambiences that you can play in the background. 
It's a pretty impressive pairing, the maps and the music. Let's just take a quick peek at the asset packs section. Here we have backgrounds, which are currently a collection of 32 static backgrounds like space, nebula, black holes, wormholes, ion clouds, things like that. And at the $10 level, 14 animated backgrounds, just for good measure. Okay, I saved the ships for last here because it's really sort of the marquee offering in this Patreon. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, there are currently almost 40 ships having been released so far. Let's take a look at the Serum Garta Dax, just as a random example. At the $1 level, you get the standard exterior and interior of this massive organic alien vessel. And let's be honest here, this is just a really pretty dungeon. As you might expect, this ship comes with the variations and all of that. I think the most remarkable feature of this and most of the ships is the exterior variations that they come with. There's a sort of independently hosted search website for this Patreon as well. If you go to hyperdrivefleet.com, you will see a visual index of all the ships and maps that they've put out so far, and you can search them by tags. If you click on any given ship or map, it opens up a three panel interface where you're supposed to be able to combine a background with any variation of the exterior or interior, if applicable, if you want. I was not able to get the background to load when I recorded this, but I'm pretty sure they'll get that all sorted out soon enough. It's still really cool to be able to instantly browse every single variant of every single map that they've put out so far and totally for free. This is the sort of tool that you're only going to see with creators who've been given a lot of resources from their supporters and who have channeled those resources back into their product to make them better and innovative. I think one last thing I wanted to point out was the commercial license that comes with being a supporter of this Patreon. Surprisingly, the creators allow you to use any and all of these maps in your adventure module as long as you credit them and add the watermark on the bottom of each instance of the map. I thought this was pretty generous considering how timely and expensive it can be to commission battle maps when you're publishing your own scenario. You'll have to read all the rules and limitations yourself before diving in here, but I generally think it's pretty cool with them. All right, so here are my thoughts on the Chepiku sci-fi Patreon. First, the cons, then the pros. Lots of file juggling. This isn't really just a problem limited to this particular creator. Anytime you have a big, successful Patreon that gives you digital files as rewards, you tend to find yourself sorting through hundreds or even thousands of files. You really have to have some kind of system to keep track of everything and sort it all. Foundry VTT integration. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here. I was going to show you how to load their maps into the Foundry VTT in this video, but I couldn't get it to work the way that I saw it being shown online in various places. I think this is mostly a product of me just being a little overwhelmed with the Foundry VTT interface. If you've ever messed around with Foundry, then you know what I mean. But look, if you can get it to work, then each of these map packs will load into Foundry just by adding a single folder into the modules subfolder. When it works, it's great. Ridiculous entry fee. It's kind of hard for me to get my head around the economics of their business model, but apparently it works for them and makes tens of thousands of patrons happy. Basically, either in the case of their fantasy Patreon or this sci-fi one, you give them an initial $10 and basically get enough sci-fi map assets to last you 10 years. And then maybe once or twice a month, they release a new map pack and you can give them $10 per map pack as they get released. But again, you get access to all of their previous packs when you join for $10 to download and keep forever. Actually, there's another con here that this brings up, and that is storage space. If you're a hoarder of digital RPG goods, then your impulse is to join and spend the next hour and a half downloading and cataloging every single map pack on offer. Well, I did that once with their fantasy maps, and it was just dozens of gigs in storage. You'll face the same issue with the sci-fi maps. Storage is getting cheaper and cheaper these days, but it's still something to consider. I guess one of the benefits of continuing your patronage is that they can store all these maps for you, and you can just visit the Patreon page and download what you need when you need it. Variations and animations. I hope you got a good idea in this video of the kinds of options that you get visually with each map pack. The color and condition variants just give GMs a lot of options and hopefully even actually inspire them to do cool things with the scene. The end goal in any case is to make a memorable experience for everyone at the table and I think having a dynamic map that can appear to respond to player choices goes a long way in delivering that experience. High resolution. These maps all come in high resolution which is just vitally important when you're zooming in tight 
on player tokens and on various details. Excellent artwork. This should probably be the first thing on the list because it's the first thing that you notice about these maps. They're just all well illustrated and very consistent in their aesthetic. I've been doing this channel for long enough to know that there's a portion of you out there who are probably foaming at the mouth right now with rage. You're thinking, I don't need animated maps. I don't want to play a video game. I want to play an RPG. And I totally hear you. Animated maps and juggling different versions of maps isn't for everyone. The amount of session prep and technical flourishes that you want to have in your game is completely up to you. There is no one right way. Just keep that in mind before you leave your nasty tirade in the comments. I will say, in defense of all these colorful maps and animations, is that humans are visual creatures. We learn by seeing and we enjoy by seeing. Better visuals in your online game means you will probably be creating a more pleasurable and memorable experience for your players. That's just human nature. Look, the fact is, there's no substitute for good GM practices, but having nice maps like these can really help. And by the way, just as a side bonus on this particular map, Starship Graveyard, it comes with specifically tailored thematic background music by Coltrane Compositions. Again, for those of you who don't need this sort of thing and who have your imagination, that's great, all the power to you. For the rest of you, bask in this awesomeness. That's all I've got for now. I've left a link below to where you can find the Chepiku Sci-Fi Patreon. Let me know in the comments if you've used their maps before and how that's worked out for you. Thanks for watching. See ya.